Hi guys. So in this tutorial today, I want to talk about some of my tips and I don't know if to call them tricks, but I guess some kind of, but anyway, tips for working, things I use in my everyday work, uh, I guess. Uh, there are always more, but these are, let's say, the um, kind of like the main of them. So let's get into it. So one second, I'm bring back the UI, which is here. Good. Okay, so select a mainframe with control <clears throat> slash command. Control, of course, if you're on a PC and command if you're on Mac. So what do I mean by that? I have here two frames. Okay, now you'll notice that when you hover over like elements in this frame, so it highlights them and lets you select them if you want to move them or anything you want to do with them, resize, change color, and so on. Of course, change designs and sizes and so on. But if you want to select uh, the frame itself, the frame that holds the screen, you will notice that you can't really select it by, hover on, by hovering on it. Okay, which makes sense, by the way, because um, you want to have the elements inside the frame highlighted and uh, and you don't want to have the screen itself highlighted as well, so then it's going to confuse and so on. So, how can you select it and why? Why do you actually need it? Let's say that I want to add a floating button here, okay? It doesn't matter really the design. Now, uh, I'll give it a fill and do something like that. This is going to be a floating button, something like that. Now, if I copy that, I'm in this um, uh, view size and I want to copy this one. And if I'll just go to this screen and paste it, you will notice that you will notice, sorry, that it pastes it in the center of my viewport, of my general viewport. It doesn't paste it exactly as it was here. Okay, now the way you can do that when you're on this zoom and not having to zoom out select the frame from here or select the frame from the uh, layer panel okay so when i'm on this uh, size of viewport i can copy that come to here uh, and just uh, press on control or command and then i can select this frame click on it and paste and then it pastes it exactly as it was here Pretty cool. Okay, <laughs> number two, resize a frame with control or command, regardless the constraints. I guess a lot of times happen to you that you have elements inside the frame and you want to resize the frame and then you see something like that. I guess it happens quite a lot. <laughs> so the only uh, the the thing that you can do just to instead of now um, configuring the constraints for each element on your frame, sometimes they are a lot. So you can just um, hold the control or command. By the way, like we did here, same thing, and then you can select the frame. Uh, you can either select it from here or the way I did right now. And when you keep holding the uh, control or command, you can resize this frame regardless of the constraints of the elements inside it. Okay, you can do it freely like that. Okay, tip number two. That was tip number two. Now tip number three, uh, click on H or W I mean this or this. By the way, I, I discovered the bug, which I'll, ex I'll explain in a second. I wrote to Figma about it. I hope they will fix it. <laughs> anyway, usually I do, by the way, I, I do uh, usually use the, um, the browser uh, for, uh, of course, working with Figma, less on the app itself, but um, I guess, I don't know, I like more working on the browser. Uh, and uh, as I was kind of like preparing myself for this tutorial, um, so I, I encounter in a bug here. I will show it in a sec. <laughs> okay, so um, when you resize uh, anything with a scale tool, you will notice that, okay, I'm gonna use the scale tool from here or you can click, click uh, K on your keyboard. It doesn't matter Mac or PC. Okay, I'm just gonna hit key on my 
keyboard and now you'll notice that when I resize this frame it resizes everything with the text and uh, the elements inside it you will see now that the height of this frame is not round pixels okay uh, if I'll keep on playing with it it keeps the width actually on round pixels and the and the height not sometimes it just does the other way around or both okay now if I want to round this pixel and why do I want to round it I'll explain now notice that if I look at the grid of the pixels uh, this frame is already disconnected from the pixel grid on the height anyway and if I do another element and I want to align this element to this frame I can never do that because it's not sitting on the pixel grid okay so that's why I want to round my pixels and when exporting to images as well uh, images in pixel format like PNG and JPEG so um, when it's not round pixels, uh, you can get blurs and the image doesn't come out always in the best quality you would expect from it because there is no half a pixel. The pixels are only round numbers. So how can you fix that? After using the scale tool, I can hit on the web platform. It works very smooth here. It sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't now it works you see i had to click a few times in order to make it work so i know there's a bug here at least on my pc i don't know if you guys are experiencing this in other pcs as well maybe maybe not anyway <laughs> so it, it, it exists but it should work uh, quite smooth so uh that was one method to do it by the way if i'll just uh control z that there is also a plugin which is called um, Pixel Perfect. <laughs> this plugin, I'm not promoting, by the way, anything. Nobody is either paying me or giving me anything to promote. Really not. I'm just really using that <laughs> plugin sometimes. So, this wonderful plugin, uh, if you click on it, run. So, it's going to round the pixels and the Y position. I will do that again. One second. Okay, so notice here that uh, also it's not the height, which is not round pixels, also the Y position, you will see it's 19, it's a, a 992.02. It's not exact as well. So if I run this plugin, it rounds the height and the Y. Okay, you can also click on it and it will take care, by the way, this plugin will take care of the, second, it will take care of the, um, of the shapes inside it as well. Let's see what's the size here. Uh, mm -hmm. I see that the corner radius is not, Let's see, oh, no, sorry. Let me select this frame and run. No, it doesn't take care of the round corners I see uh, of the text I know it doesn't usually okay so what this uh, let me just use the uh, scale tool again okay let's do that again and here okay we have this uh, width which is not round pixels and this is not round I mean the uh, width and the height as well as the small ones as well and the text I guess as well yes it's not round okay so when I select this frame and I hit this uh, this plugin with apply to vector nodes it can take care only on the shapes take care of the shape sorry but not the text so I will run it you see so it rounded our width and here uh, as well it took care of the shapes which is pretty good uh, but the text it can't so you have to round it manually okay this is all the things about using the scale tool i always kind of like uh, use it as a last um, as a last option i try not to but sometimes you just have to <laughs> okay so uh okay easily copy effects and color 
Um, so we are in tip number four and I have this shape here. Let me give it a uh, white background and let's give it some round corners. And now I create an effect. I press, I press plus on the effect. I have a shadow here and I will do that, let's say 20 and 16 on the opacity and I get something like that. Cool. Now I want to take only the shadow, okay? Not the, uh, not this one. Second, I am not copying its properties, meaning that in this, uh, in this um, case, it's white color, round corners, and the shadow. So it's all of them together. I just want to copy the shadow. Notice here that when I hover on this part, it's going to click the minus. Uh, this is the visibility. That's the type of filter. And this is the filter settings. When I click really on the far end here, now it's going to select all this row. And I'm going to just copy control or command C. And then let's say clicking on this frame, control or command V, it's copying, sorry, <laughs> no, it's not. I meant, yeah, so that's copy. I copied actually the shadow and I click on this frame and control V. And you see, I have the shadow applied to this frame. Meaning if I have another shape here, and this shape, let's say, is in a orange color. Um, and then I control V. So I have the shadow. You see it less now because it's it's uh, orange. But uh, the shadow is applied also to the orange rectangle. Okay, if it's an ellipse, it doesn't matter as well. Let's make here an ellipse. Give it a, a kind of like a bluish color. And... Control V and I have the shadow applied also to this to this um, ellipse sorry and here also when the ellipse is selected I can do the same and click this color control C or command C click on this shape control V and then I have the color applied so that means that I can copy colors and effects separately and not having to copy all the properties of, of uh, a shape or a frame uh, or a group for that matter, and then paste it as a whole uh, package of properties. Okay, good. So that's four. Uh, number five, place an element on auto layout while holding the space. Hmm. Okay, so let's say that I have here uh, a menu item. to something like that a menu I mean I have a menu it's which is built uh, from uh, menu items and let's say that I have okay something like that okay and now I uh, let's call it a menu item and then I duplicate it put it here and just auto layout these two menu items together. It doesn't matter now if they are components or not. Shift A uh, on PC and Mac. I can click add auto layout from here or I can right uh, click on my mouse and just add auto layout. And now they are both in auto layout. I'll give them, let's say, a, sorry, here, I'll give them like two pixels. Um, difference and then I'll duplicate some more okay so I have here this of course I don't need these ones and let's say uh, this is gonna be like that so that's my menu okay now uh, I want to show that this menu also have a scroll okay in my designs so I'm doing a let's say a scroll handle something like that Okay, let's give it, you know, let's make it a bit wider. Six and yeah, that's okay. So I want to drag this scroll handle on this auto layout. Okay, so you see that if I'll drag it inside this auto layout, I'm going to get 
this because it adds it as another item in the auto layout and it doesn't matter to the auto layout of course uh, what size is this item the way that you can do that actually is you can click the item uh, hold the space bar on your keyboard and just drag it over the auto layout and just place it on it wherever you want something like that okay so again you can select an element hold the space bar and just drag it on an auto layout without having the auto layout swallow it inside it <laughs> that's what i meant of course i can just uh, select both of them now this is the scroll uh, handle and I can select both of them and just frame them together frame selection and now they are together which I have here the menu that is the menu and this is the scroll handle and they are happily uh, live together <laughs> okay so this is uh, tip number five Tip number six, uh, placing elements in a smaller frame in an auto layout. Okay, that's not 100% uh, understandable. <laughs> I will explain it right now. I will show it and then you will understand better. Um, okay, so let's say that I have here a button. This is number six we're talking about, okay? I'm kind of like all over the place, but it's just showing uh, how it all works together. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a text, which is called button. Um, and I'll do something like that. Okay, so that's a button. And now uh, I will shift A, either Mac or PC, which adds an auto layout with a default 10 pixels spacing around it. That's the default when it's auto layout, when you create an auto layout on one element. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I'll give it a background and i will make it round corners something like that sorry uh something like that and i will add let's say 30 and 30 so i have here a button like that okay now let's even make it a bit bigger that's okay let's give it a okay that's okay so I want to uh, show a button which has a notification on it. Imagine even an icon. It can be a bell icon. It can be anything uh, else that you're working with. And also a button with some kind of indication. One second, sorry. I just wanted to drink something. Yeah. Okay. So now I want to add, let's say, a, a notification on it i'll give it a kind of a red no that's okay you know something like that um yeah it doesn't matter that's okay okay and uh, i will make it uh, rounded and here i'm gonna have a number let's say four or 44 or doesn't matter um, let's give it 14 pixel size. Yeah, that's okay. Make it white and align it into this frame. Let's call it shortly note notifications. I mean, okay. Now, uh, I will make this auto layout, not vertical, but I will make, sorry, not a, uh, hor horizontal. I will make it a vertical auto layout because I want to add this one inside it. So let's say I drag this one inside it. So of course it will place it here, which looks very weird now, <laughs> of course. And uh, I can align this auto layout to the right. Uh, I can, let's say, do here zero spacing. So anyway, there is no way kind of like to uh, to make it in an auto layout if you need to uh, and I will show you in a minute why it's good to have it also sometimes in this situation in an auto layout as well so of course as you see it doesn't really work okay so I'm gonna drag it outside I'm gonna bring back the um, the spacing the uh, sorry the padding that we had here and now what I'm gonna do is something like that I will 
I will put this one in a frame. Okay, this is the frame that holds our notification. Okay, now this frame, of course, I don't need the background and I can make this frame also um, uh, uncheck the clip content and make this frame one pixel height like that. Now this uh, notification indicator is still inside this frame. It's outside of the border of it, but I can move it inside the frame, okay? And place it kind of here, something like that, which still belongs to the frame, okay? So this frame, let's call it note holder. And this frame holds this one. I will make it shorter for now. Sorry. Let's bring this one here. And this frame I will make, it's a stubborn one. Oh, sorry. This one, by the way, on its constraints, I'm gonna constrain it to the right side of the frame that holds it. So it's gonna be something like that. Now I'm gonna throw it. Now the minimum width that I can give a frame is one pixel height. Okay, one pixel. Uh, I cannot give it a zero, for example. So it's of course, <laughs> zero is nothing. So it's a one pixel and I'm gonna put it here. Already we're having a progress. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, better than it was before. Now what I'm going to do is uh, put this uh, top padding zero. Okay, already doing good. So. We have this frame and we're gonna we're gonna make this frame by the way. Uh, we're gonna move it one second. So that's a note and let's see. Okay, this frame, which is on top here, this frame, I'm gonna give it a fill container. Okay, now uh, notice that now we have uh, this uh, actually um, this uh, notification circle uh, actually responsive to the layout that it sits on. Now, we want the text actually to be, uh, we want to put this auto layout, let's say in a center, uh, because I want the text all the time in the middle. And now look what we have. We have this button uh, completely uh, in a great uh, shape and, uh, and uh, as we wanted it. And this notification, by the way, uh, I can either play with its placement uh, a bit more to the left or as I want it to be, because it's still on this frame constrained to the right side and in the uh, vertically middle of it. So I can always play with that and position it better and look what a great way basically to do that. Okay, so we have it nailed. Good, check, going to the next one. <laughs> okay, so um, flattening icons and vectors. Um, sometimes you have a situation which let's say you have an icon like that. I'm just gonna do something very like uh, simple and easy. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. So instead of having these two shapes separate or even united, they are still separate shapes. You can flatten uh, selection. You can flatten this icon and have it as a one piece. It's easier to work with. And by the way, handing off to the programmers on a later stage, that is much better to work like that. Another way that you can do that, by the way, is just right click on it. I'll just control Z for a sec. You can either select them both, right click and uh, flatten flatten this one okay flatten and then you have it as a one vector also if you do let's say uh, this icon control D I duplicate it shift H is instead of doing this one flip uh, either horizontal or vertical shift H horizontal shift V uh, vertical so you, I just do a shift H and do it like that. Now I have them both as separate lines. I can select them both and right click on them, flatten. And now I have it as a one icon, okay? 
just great. So it's better to eat to work like that and flatten uh, all the parts of the icons that you can. Sometimes they're in different colors. I understand that sometimes maybe there's a different situation. There are different situations, but uh, recommended more to work like that. Minus spacing between space, uh, ah, minus spacing with, sorry, with space between in an auto layout. So we have some auto layout tips here. Okay, if you guys, by the way, are not familiar with the auto layout in Figma, I suggest that you do check uh, my tutorial on auto layout. So uh, you will probably uh, understand it better after it. Okay, much better, I guess. Um, so what I mean by that, you can have, let's say, uh, let's do here something like that. I have here four uh, ellipse. Now what I will bring this icon, uh, sorry, this plugin, which is called, I guess, a lot of guys know it, content reel, of course, placing images, avatars on, um, on shapes. Okay, so I have these four uh, ellipse, four circles uh, selected, images, I'll just uh, select now avatars, female, and that's it, I have it here, great. Now I will, let's say, give it a stroke, make it something like that, make it white, give it a shadow. Yes, yeah, so do something like that. Okay, we have them uh, designed, great. Now, look at that. I can select them all together. Again, plus a auto layout, a shift A or just right click. I will make them an auto layout, call them avatars. And now if I um, uh, turn or let's say switch the behavior of this auto layout instead of packed. Packed means that these items are actually one uh, packed one beside the other or if I click on the uh, vertical auto layout, I will make it vertical like that. So I can, I can make it either make it vertical or horizontal like that. If I change the behavior from packed to space between, that means that I can, now the spacing between them is uh, automatic and I can do a minus space between them and do something like that. Look how easy and quick we did that, okay? Now, of course, I can duplicate, let's say, another one. And when I duplicate another one, it distributes all these uh, avatars on the same width that we uh, did before. I can just stretch it and make it like that. Okay, so that's uh, using minus spacing with space between in an auto layout. That's exactly what it means. Just one example of you know, another, other many other situations that you can use that. Using space bar when moving items outside a frame area, <clears throat> sorry. So moving items when moving, uh, sorry, <laughs> using space bar when moving items outside a frame area in order to keep it uh, within the frame. And what do I mean by that? Uh, let's say that I have here a frame. No, let's say, I mean, I really have your frame, <laughs> of course. And sometimes, if we just have in you know many situations we have uh, an element that we want to drag uh, a bit outside the frame and we start dragging it and it's boop, you see it pops out of the frame and it happens a lot by the way i know that it happens a lot to me in my work uh, so now it's in the frame if i'm gonna hold the space bar exactly as we did here actually so it's the same it's the same principle i can select this hold the space bar and now sorry select it select and hold okay selecting and holding the uh the mouse what you're uh, pressing on on the mouse and when i uh, hold the space bar as well i can drag this element and you will notice that i can place it anywhere that i want 
and it doesn't go out of the frame that it belongs to. Now the frame is in clip content, that's why you're not seeing it. When I will uncheck this clip content, so you will see this item and it still belongs to that frame. If I will move this frame, you will see that this item is with this frame. So again, to any situation that you need to move things kind of like a bit, kind of outside of the frame, but you still want it to, be, uh, to belong to the frame that it belongs to. Uh, so holding the space bar will prevent it from just popping outside the frame like, like that, okay? Um, yeah, that was my nine kind of quick tips, I guess, uh, for my uh, for some of the things that I do in my everyday work. Um, I hope it was helpful and uh, and a good tutorial for you guys, and maybe teached you um, you. I mean, you learned from it uh, a thing or two. So thank you very much, and uh, I would like uh, very much if you will give me a like. Uh, comment if you have any comments uh, and of course subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed thank you so much see you in the next tutorial bye for now